Now that we have Groovy installed, it's time to take it for a little test drive. The Groovy shell, aka Groovy SH, is a command line application that allows us easy access to evaluate Groovy expressions, define classes, and run some really simple experiments. This is an easy way for us to start playing around with Groovy right out of the box. To start the shell, we're simply going to run Groovy SH on Unix or Groovy.bat on Windows from the command line. Before we take it for a test drive, I'm here on the groovy-lang.org website. And if you go to the documentation section and under tools, there is the Groovy SH. All, most of the information that we're going to cover today is right in this section. So I'm going to go ahead and launch a terminal. And let's make that a little bigger. And like I said, the first thing we want to do to launch it, we want to type Groovy SH. And if we want to, we can go Groovy SH dot help just to get a little information about what our options are. And if we wanted to find out what version we're running, we can do dash version. So this tells us that we're on the Groovy version 2.4.5. So let's go ahead and clear that and clear that. And let's type Groovy SH. So this will put us into the Groovy shell. And you can see now we're in here and we have a command prompt here. We can type out different expressions. So if I wanted to say, what is one plus one? Groovy is going to evaluate that to two. We can also type out something like print hello world. And there's the print line that prints out our string hello world. We also have the ability to type out multiple lines. The multi-line complex expressions, like a closure or a class definition, can be defined over several lines. When the shell detects that it has a complete expression, it will then compile and try to evaluate it. So let's try and look at that and see how that's going to work. So let's type class person. Now I'm going to hit enter. It the shell notices that that's not a complete expression. Um, so it's not going to go ahead and compile that just yet. So now I'm going to say def say hello and we'll do a print line of hello and I'm going to hit enter again. Again, not a complete expression yet. Now what I want to do is close that off and hit enter. So now we have a class called person that we can instantiate. So what if we want person equals new person, right? So we're creating an instance of person. There's the return, which is the actual instance. Then we can say person dot say hello. And there we go, it printed out hello. So you see we were able to create a class and then go ahead and use that class to call a method called say hello on it. Don't worry if some of the syntax doesn't, doesn't, isn't clear yet. Obviously we're gonna go into a lot of this throughout the course. I just kinda wanna show you this shell that you can come into and actually use. So in the last one we created a class but we can also define functions that way. So what if we wanted to say def hello name, and again, we're in a multi-line expression. Whoops, I did not, let's do that. Def hello name, and this is going to print line hello name. That should be good. And then we're going to close this off. So now we can say, hello, Dan. And we called our function called hello. So that's all fine and dandy. Uh, so we can see that that's an easy way to kind of evaluate expressions. Um, the shell also has a number of different commands which provide rich access to the shell's environment. Commands all have the name and a shortcut, which is something like colon H um, for help. Commands may also have some predefined system aliases, 
and you can you can also create your own aliases. So let's go ahead and look at that. So if we type uh, H for help, we see all the different available commands. Things like clear clears the buffer and resets the prompt uh, counter. So if we wanted to do clear. Now those functions that we defined before are no longer there. They're no longer in, those instances won't be available. Um, we can do things like create aliases, uh, display the current buffer if we wanted to. We can import like a class or into the namespace. And we can also go ahead and quit if we wanted to get out of there. So, the shell can do a few more things, but I think that's all we're going to cover for right now. Again, just an easy way to start evaluating simple, uh, groovy expressions. I hope you enjoyed this lecture, and I will see you in the next one.